Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today we are reviewing the Hulkbuster Ultron Edition set. It was sent to us by LEGO, so thanks a lot for sending this set to us for a review, guys. And uh, let's jump into the Lightroom. So this set is 1,363 pieces. It's recommended for ages 1 to 14, and it comes with one exclusive minifigure, which does give you an idea of how big the Hulkbuster uh, suit here is. But let me do a different shot, which will give you a better comparison. And now you can see uh, this guy is about twice as big compared to the uh, other two play sets. That's the original Hulkbuster Smash set there. This is the one that came out pretty recently. And uh, once again, here he is next to a minifig. So needless to say, this is uh, not at all like a play set. People are calling this a Ultimate Collector Series set, though I don't believe it has any official markings for that on the boss. On sorry, on the box. But you definitely get the idea that this is one big machine. This thing is about half the size of sort of what it looks like in the actual box art. But uh, that isn't to say that this doesn't have a pretty decent stature. Let's take a closer look at this guy now. Uh, I want to talk about maybe some of the movable features on him and uh, get an idea of how he works as sort of an action figure. Because at the end of the day, this really is just sort of, um, sort of a Lego, a large Lego action figure. Now, I'll say when it comes to articulation, he has some pretty good qualities to him. But there's also, I think, maybe a few or at least one quality uh, of the way the body moves around that I'm not really a big fan of. Uh, personally, I think the arms rotate quite well. They have um, pretty much a 360 degree rotation. And then the arms can just fold in sort of at, at about an angle, 45 degrees roughly. That's uh, pretty realistic for a human arm. So I think that actually works uh, pretty well. Uh, the head opens up, but that's not necessarily a point of articulation, I would say. And then really the, the main point, and I think the most important point uh, when it comes to a build like this, is the way the legs move. So you can, you know, you could essentially give this guy the splits or whatever, uh, which is nice that he can move out that way, but his legs don't have the ability to move forward or back, and the knee joints are locked. With the knee joints being locked, they've actually been doing that quite a lot on uh, giant Lego mechs for, uh, for a while now, and I think that's fine. Um, it really does add a lot of stability, and you can pose a character pretty well without having to move the, uh, the knees. Um, but not having the ability to move the leg forward really does limit him if you want him to look like he's actually walking. So he stands up just fine. He does have a little bit uh, sometimes he'll lean forward a little bit. Not too bad. If I give him a side profile, I'll show you. Like if you let him sit, sometimes he'll want to jump forward. It really just depends on how you place the arms. If they're, if they're both maybe lunging forward, the body weight shifts forward a little bit, which isn't, which isn't too big of a deal. Um, yeah, you can see sometimes that you see how he wants to jump forward just a little bit. Um, that, that just depends. If you change maybe the shape of his arms, they're moved about flat now, now he's pretty steady. So there is a little bit of a balance thing going on. But the main thing to point out, I guess, um, that is worth pointing out is you can still sort of get him into a walking position if you want. Um, I know most people would like that. You can splay his legs out a little bit, twist him, and you can twist the torso. So his knees look that way. That actually looks pretty, uh, that doesn't work that well. Maybe if I sort of bring him in a little bit. It'll look sort of like he's walking, but when you pay attention to the knees and the, where the waistline actually is, it doesn't really work out. Not to say he's not posable. I'd say he's still a pretty posable guy. Um, he just doesn't have the walking pose that you can really, you can't really get a particularly great walking pose. You can do plenty of other things with him, just not that. When taking a closer look at the posability of the hand, You'll see it's, it's set up in a really similar way. This piece is used for a lot of different uh, sort of larger Lego hands. He's got three fingers there and the fourth opposing thumb. It's kind of nice though. Um, let's see if I can change that angle. It's kind of nice. You can actually see that the thumb has some um, rotating articulation as well, which allows you to kind of play around with um, just the placement of the fingers and you can have him hold on to something and the thumb can actually squeeze inwards a little bit if he wants to grab a minifig. It's still a little bit funny. Um, I've never been particularly great at putting a minifigure in a guy's hand, but of course it's definitely big enough 
and uh, yep. I try to get them to flip it upside down. I'm sure you can do it on a tight enough grip, but it's pretty good articulation all around. Now, when it comes to the other hand, this is the alternate hand. This is the sort of jackhammer fist punch that uh, if you did watch the Ultron movie, you will see that you can actually uh, punch this thing around. This, sorry, just broke that right off. But this can actually shoot forward and back. I was trying to pull it back, it actually pushes forward. So that is from a pretty iconic scene where uh, the Hulkbuster is b literally busting the Hulk in the head just over and over and over again. And I think it knocks him out, or maybe it knocks him out for a short period of time. I can't particularly remember that. But there you go. That's the articulation for one side. I think the rubber band that operates sort of the tension that allows the punching to work, uh, it sticks out a little bit, but um, I don't really think, I think it kind of works as almost looking like a timing belt. It looks like it actually has a mechanical kind of function that kind of fits in with uh, the way the build works. So um, I think that works pretty well. Now, when it comes to the shoulders, um, not a big fan of this blue that sticks out. In fact, that's probably the worst looking aspect of the, t the entire build. It's a little bit of the blue, but you can sort of play around with the shoulder pauldrons depending on how you want to articulate the arms. These are supposed to sort of mold in and kind of give the illusion that there's a more solid bit of building there. But um, it works, but it also, I feel like probably people have been pretty critical about this sort of um, messing around with the all, all over profile of the uh, the Hulkbuster. And speaking of the profile or sort of the general looks of this guy, the actual build uh, aesthetic look of how the Legos are put together, I'd say this guy is really, really solid. And this is where the model I think excels the most because he looks good from all angles. This isn't one of those buildable figs like when they do a large uh, Lego minifigure character and the back is totally covered with underside studs. This guy um, has detailing in every single spot. I think just about every single spot. Uh, the only parts that I would say maybe even would be lacking a little bit, um, the hips there, there's a sort of an open ball joint and a little bit less so, but definitely exposed is that shoulder there towards the top. Uh, I know some people may have been a little bit critical about that, but personally, I think the suggestion of having that larger shoulder ultimately doesn't really hurt the model, but really, there's so much good when it comes to looking at this. So the side profile, the feet, everywhere, the sides of the legs, the knees, there, there's nothing missing in terms of just this guy looking like they wanted him to look good from all the different angles. Okay, I've showed sort of the top part a bit. If I turn him around though, show the total back, the total back of this guy, even the backs of the knees are covered. You can lift these flaps up. There's these little thruster pieces but everything, the, everything really does look quite complete when, uh, when you've got this guy looking good. And that means this guy's gonna look good from all angles and from, from all distances as well. He is covered with a ton of different dark red parts. I think there are a lot of new mold, not necessarily new molds, but a lot of pieces that have been molded in new colors for this particular set, so much so that it's not really worth pointing out or taking a look at. I'm sure if you want to find all the new parts, uh, you'll be able to see that in the instructions that are online. But when I was down here earlier, right, there's these thrusters. Um, these are actually not white pieces. These are glow-in-the-dark pieces. So in the low light setting, you can actually have those things pop out. And the same goes with um, everything else, all these white points. And I believe there's some blaster shots as well when you look at sort of the, let's say the hand of the Hulkbuster. Yeah, once again, that's, uh, that's all glow in the dark. I don't know how much you're gonna be using that function or how good it's really, really gonna look um, when you get that out there, but it is kind of a fun little extra bit that if you really want to, you can actually have some glowing functions. And then if you really want something to light up, it's all about, um, it's all about getting the light to appear in the chest. Now, this is not blue. The arc reactor here is not blue. They only have two different colors for the LED lights. One is this orange and the other one's red. They did, if you look at the light from another angle, there is actually light blue here. Now, this part is definitely an exclusively molded piece. It's uh, pretty large. It's got a pretty decent print as well and sort of three points of articulation. Those are a droid arm so they can both move there. And then there's that ratcheted joint right at the top but really, 
Um, what you can do is take out the minifig and the inside, uh, it's pretty basic. You know, there's, there's no studs that hold the Mark 43 minifigure in there. He actually just sits down nice and loose, so it's super easy to get him in and out. He might rattle around on the inside maybe just a tad, but nothing that's really gonna sort of um, pop out to you in any particular way. So I like that it's really easy to just move him in and out. This is probably, probably the easiest cockpit that you can manage. Um, and I think it looks pretty good. Um, the head, I believe, should be sort of molded down or bent down a little bit further into the actual body of the Hulkbuster suit if you want it to be perfectly accurate to the Ultron edition of what this set is actually based on. But for the most part, yeah, this actually fits pretty well. It's a pretty good build for the cockpit all around. Now, when it comes to the stand here, uh, this is a bit better than most of the stands we get for any sort of uh, sort of higher quality Ultimate Collector Series style build. Um, it's built up uh, at least an extra and at least an extra bit. It looks like a about two bricks and a plate high instead of just you know a standard plate or tile high. And uh, an interesting thing to also point out at the bottom is there are tires here, tires that grip the surface. I'll show off the tires. There's actually tires in the feet of the Hulkbuster as well, but that's what keep this thing, once it's on the ground, you can't, it won't slide. You know, there's a bit of resistance when, oh, there you go. When trying to push it around, it'll make that little sort of vibration. So the, the sticker also has a really fun way of sort of uh, folding in at this particular angle. It's flush, but then you can actually just have a nice little fun bend out there if you wanna have that sticker further on display. There were a couple other stickers um, on the model itself. Nothing that really sticks out in any particular way. This though does look pretty good. I like, I like the black background. Um, it's not see-through in the back like the other uh, stickers in this particular uh, build are. But yeah, it fits in once again, nice and flush. You can see it. There you go, just about perfect. And then I think also one of the better parts of this display is you do have a little bit of interactivity. So this is one of the arms that moves around. I don't know if this is uh, that one particular arm that Tony is always sort of, uh, sort of bad mouthing, but you can move it in and out of three different spots on either side. The same goes for the one on the other side, and that's kind of fun. So you can just play around a little bit with uh, how you want your display to look. And uh, visually, I think it looks great. It has plenty of articulation. They have a lot of friction here, so you can really set these arms up in kind of any way that you like. And then you've noticed that this other arm is, uh, this has just got the alternate arm. So you know how the jackhammer arm is sort of the default or what's, that's what you originally build onto the Hulkbuster. If you wanted them to have two perfectly symmetrical or the same type of arm on both sides, this is just the regular forearm and hand that would connect onto the Hulkbuster suit. The last thing to point out here is this little bit. It's just a couple of little sticker details. This thing also can move around. I believe you too can change its position on the board itself, depending on where you want it to be. Now, when it comes to the exclusive minifigure, we've got the Mark 43. This guy also did come out in the more recent Hulkbuster set as well. And to be fair, the detailing here is good. There's definitely some expanded detail on the upper part of the chest, as well as the upper part of the back. And really the entire design is 100% brand new. Though I have to say, when you look at him next to a bunch of other Iron Man minifigs, he doesn't really feel that different compared to the rest. I wouldn't say he particularly sticks out, just a nice bit of fine detailing in general. The one thing that does kinda lack on him is the fact that it doesn't come with Tony Stark's head. It's just a trans clear piece, and I don't really get why they did that. It totally could have used a Tony Stark face, preferably maybe even an exclusive expression, but they kinda left it blank, so it's sort of just an empty suit, which uh, feels weird because you actually get the Hulkbuster set without, technically speaking, a pilot, just a minifigure, but uh, he's supposed to be sort of a blank suit. It comes with a little two-piece stand that says Mark 43 on a sticker, and I have a feeling that he will be pretty popular amongst minifig collectors. This set also came with these three little builds here. This one is a tiny little model of the Hot Rod. I believe Tony Stark actually has a full-size version of that. And then uh, this is a fire extinguisher, and the fire extinguisher is supposed to scale with the Hulkbuster suit, so you can actually see it next to the minifig. I feel like it's just a, just a little bit taller. And then the last build here is Veronica. This is the air support system. These are some of the clear stickers. 
I like the uh, chromified little slope pieces there. And uh, of course, this is just a, also a really small build. I have a feeling Veronica, um, or I'm pretty sure Veronica, is a really large uh, hovering ship that is sort of the satellite control, extra support, making sure that the Hulkbuster doesn't go down in a fight. So, fun little build. I do like having Veronica and uh, the hot rod. And this is a, this is a really nice little build for, for a uh, fire extinguisher. When it comes to final thoughts about the Hulkbuster Ultron Edition, I'd say there's a lot that works for it. I think this really does still look good as a, a fun set to display. It will look good from the front. It will look good from the back. The display stand, I think, is probably one of the better display stands we've had for, I mean, any LEGO set that I can think of right off the top of my head. But if you're going for sort of ultimate accuracy, or if you're actually going for accuracy based on what the set name is, it is the Ultron edition, then the designers didn't really try to be particularly accurate uh, to that design for the Hulkbuster suit. Not to say that this doesn't work quite well as a figure, but the particular body dimensions, I believe building at this scale, the body dimensions could have been met, I think a little bit closer if they're really, really going for that uh, particular style, if they're really trying to model that Hulkbuster suit from the movie. The part to price ratio is quite good. There's a lot of really fun pieces that are used, new molds or at least new colors for a lot of molds. And I will say also that this is a set that could definitely use modification or be modified if you wanted to change it. I know there are builders that are already sort of changing up the look to make it a little bit more accurate to what we saw from the film. And my personal favorite Lego set, the uh, Ultimate Collector Series Slave one is to a set that we have modified ourselves. So I think this is good. It's definitely an awesome set. Not that it can't do without improvement, but altogether I'd still say it's a pretty solid UCS set. All right, so that's it for this set review, everybody. Thanks a lot for watching. Remember, if you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.